Hey everyone, welcome back to Yusof Reacts. Today, we're diving into the final chapter of the Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn, Part 2. Whether you're a die-hard fan or just curious about how it all wraps up, we've got you covered. So let's get into it. Released in 2012, Breaking Dawn, Part 2, is the grand finale of the Twilight series, directed by Bill Condon. It's a film that's packed with drama, action, and of course, a lot of supernatural elements. The movie picks up right after the dramatic events of Breaking Dawn. Part 1. Bella Swan, now a vampire, is adjusting to her new life and her role as a mother to her half-human, half-vampire daughter, Renesmee. One of the most exciting aspects of this film is Bella's transformation. Kristen Stewart, who plays Bella, really shines as she takes on her new role with a blend of strength and vulnerability. And Robert Pattinson's portrayal of Edward continues to captivate as he supports Bella in their new life together. The plot thickens when the Volturi, the Vampire Council, learn about Renesmee, and mistakenly believe she's an immortal Childa being that's forbidden. This sets up a thrilling showdown that will keep you on the edge of your seat. The film's climax is intense and action-packed, featuring an epic battle between the Cullen family and the Volturi. Without giving away too many spoilers, let's just say the film delivers a few surprises and dramatic moments that are sure to leave an impression. And of course, the film concludes with a poignant epilogue that ties up the saga's storylines, giving fans a satisfying closure to Bella and Edward's journey. Overall, Breaking Dawn, Part 2 offers a fitting end to the Twilight series, with its mix of romance, action, and fantasy. The film stays true to the essence of the books while delivering a visually stunning and emotionally charged conclusion. After the birth of Renesmee or Nessie, the Cullens gather other vampire clans. In order to protect the child from a false allegation that puts the family in front of the Volturi. The final Twilight Saga begins with Bella now a vampire learning to use her abilities. And happy to see her daughter, Renesmee is flourishing. But when someone sees Renesmee do something that makes them think that she was turned, this person goes to the Volturi because it is a violation to turn a child. And the penalty is death for both who turned the child into a vampire and the child because they deem a turned child too dangerous. Alice gets a vision of the Volturi coming after them. So the Cullens try to convince them that Renesmee is not a threat. So they ask friends and family to come stand with them. But when someone who has it in for the Volturi shows up and tells them they should be ready for a fight. And they get ready. Bella Kristen Stewart awakens from her transformation from human to vampire. Aware of her new and heightened abilities, but unaware of changes within the coven such as Jacob Taylor Lautner having imprinted on her child Renesmee. Imprinting basically means that Jacob sees that person as some sort of a mate in the time to come. As a newborn Bella is stronger than almost everyone else in the coven. Her newfound enhanced senses allow her to notice even the smallest things like dirt. In the carpet, flowers blooming, spiders spinning a web and so on. She surpasses Edward with her physical abilities. Bella goes crazy at the smell of human blood and has to be restrained and trained to sustain on animal blood such as from a deer. Renesmee is already a healthy toddler when Bella first meets her. Renesmee's ability is to show her memories to anyone she touches. Bella is angry when she finds that Jacob has imprinted on Renesmee. Jacob tries to explain that imprinting is a wolf thing and they have no control over it. Plus, Imprinting doesn't always mean to be a romantic or a sexual thing. It can also be more like a protective brother or a friend kind of relationship. Now that Bella is strong, she is able to push Jacob around very easily. Bella says that Renesmee is a baby and Jacob cannot have any sort of wolf-like claim on her. Jacob is already calling Renesmee as Nessie and Bella gets angrier that he nicknamed her daughter after the Loch Ness Monster. Jacob explains that in the last days of her pregnancy Bella wanted to be near Jacob. It wasn't Bella, but Renesmee that wanted to be near him as he had imprinted on her. Jacob says that nothing ever made sense between their love triangle before. But now he knows the reason as he was supposed to imprint on Renesmee. 
For her 19th birthday, Alice gifts Edward and Bella a cabin of their own in the woods. The cabin is super luxurious and hidden deep in the forest, providing complete privacy. The sex is amazing as Edward is not holding back anymore, plus vampires don't sleep, or sleep, or get tired, or even eat. Edward says that Emmett and Rosalie were so bad that it took a decade for them to get over their lust for each other. It also appears that Bella's father, Charlie Billy Burke, has been attempting to contact the Cullens for updates on Bella's illness. They intend to tell him she didn't survive, which requires that they move out of Forks, Washington to protect their identities. Jacob, desperate not to lose Renesmee, tells Charlie that his daughter is in fact alive and well and explains that Bella has had to change in order to survive. He morphs into a wolf, revealing his tribe's shape-shifting power, but does not tell Charlie about vampires. This way Charlie is protected from the Volturi as he doesn't know about the existence of vampires. Bella's friends include Jessica Anna Kendrick, Mike Newton Michael Welch, Angela Weber Christian Serratos, and Eric Yorkie Justin Chan. The Cullens include Edward, Alice Ashley Green, Rosalie Nikki Reed, Jasper Jackson Rathbone, Carlisle Peter Fascinelli, Emmett Kellen Lutz and Esma Elizabeth Reeser. The werewolves include Jacob, Sam Yuli Chase Spencer, Quill Tyson Houseman, Embry Kiowa Gordon, Leah Julia Jones. The only female werewolf, Seth Boo Boo Stewart Jacob's friend and Leah's brother. Paul Lahote, Alex Maras, and Jared Cameron Bronson Pelletier. Billy Blackgill Birmingham is a Quilut elder and Jacob's physically disabled father. Emily Tinsel Corey is Sam's fiance. Charlie comes to visit Bella at the Cullen's home and the Cullens have to teach Bella how to act like a human. She has to remember to move slowly, blink, slouch, and move her shoulders to give the impression of breathing. Bella wears contact lenses to hide the new color of her eyes. Bella refuses to tell Charlie about what happened to her at LS. Renice Me is introduced to Charlie as their adopted niece. Charlie now lives with Leah and Seth's mother Sue Alex Rice. Several months pass with Carlisle monitoring Renice Me's rapid growth. On an outing in the woods, a bitter Irina Maggie Grace sees Renice Me from a distance and believes her to be an immortal child. Immortal children were those who were frozen in childhood, and because they could not be trained nor restrained, they destroyed entire villages. They were eventually executed, as were the parents who created them, and the creation of such children was outlawed. Irina is part of the Denali Coven and was a maid of Laurent, who was killed by the Cullens. She hated the Cullens and was looking for an opportunity for revenge. The original Denali mother created an immortal child and was destroyed as a result. Irina goes to the Volturi to report what she has seen. The Volturi include leader Aro Michael Sheen and his brothers Caius Jamie Campbell Bauer. A Volturi elder who is very strict about vampire laws and Marcus Christopher Heyerdahl. A Volturi elder who has the gift of seeing the relationship connections between people and include Jane Dakota fanning a guard of the Volturi who has the ability to torture people with illusions of pain, Alec Cameron Bright. Jane's brother who has the ability to cut off senses, Demetri Charlie Bewley a Volturi guard who is a gifted tracker, and Felix Daniel Cudmore a Volturi guard who has supreme strength. Alice sees the Volturi and Arena coming to kill the Cullens and instructs the others to gather as many witnesses as they can to testify that Renice Me is not an immortal converted to vampire as a child, but was born a vampire and hence would continue to grow to a vampire adult. Alice and Jasper suddenly disappear leaving a note that they are searching for evidence that the Volturi would believe. The Cullens know that they do not stand a chance against Jane and Alec. The Cullens begin to summon witnesses, such as the Denali family. The Denali include Elazar Christian Camargo who has the ability to identify the special powers of other vampires. Carmen Ma Maestro maid of Elazar, Tanya Mayana Burring leader of the Denali Coven. And Kate Casey Labo who has the ability to release an electric current over her body. The witness would need to testify that children born as human and vampire grow up to be normal vampire adults and are not frozen as kids. 
Remus Mee touches the witnesses to share her growing up memories with them, so they could be witnesses. One of the Denali, Elazar later discovers that Bella has a special ability. A powerful mental shield, which she can extend to protect others from mental attacks. The Cullens travel to Egypt to meet Amun Omar Metwali, Benjamin Rami Malek, and Tia Angela Serafian and share Renesmee's memories with them. Senna Tracy Higgins and Zafrina Judith Shikoni has power to control minds and make them see what she wants come from the Amazon. Rosalie and Emmett find Garrett Lee Pace a friend of Carlisle who has been around since British rule over the Americans. Alistair Joe Anderson is one of the last of Carlisle friends to join. As more and more vampire gather in the Forks a total of 18 vampires arrive. The instincts of the Quilute take over and many more tribe members shapeshift into werewolves. Vladimir Noel Fisher and Stefan Guri Weinberg arrive and inform the Cullens that the Volturi are preparing witnesses of their own who will testify to crimes committed by the Cullen. A coven head explains that when Aro wants someone from a coven, soon evidence turns up proving that the coven committed a crime. Aro always pardons one person when he declares their thoughts to be repentant. This person always has a unique ability and is given a position as a guard of the Volturi. Edward now understands that Aro is after Alice, as he has no one like her, and this is perhaps also why Alice left. The Covens know that a war is coming, and they don't want to fight. But Edward tells them that what is happening to the Cullens can happen to anyone anytime and encourages them to stand up to the Volturi. Some of their potential witnesses like Toshiro Masami Kosaka are attacked by the Volturi and prevented from supporting the Cullens. Carlisle and Edward realize they may have to fight the Volturi. Their witnesses ultimately agree to stand with them in battle. Having realized the Volturi increased the guard by falsely accusing covens of crimes to gain vampires from the destroyed coven with gifts. The coven trains Bella to project her ability of mentally protecting herself to anyone she desired. While all was going on, Alice took off, with a brief note, indicating she was running away from the coming fight. In reality, Alice was busy gathering a key witness, which could change the battle. Alice left clues for Bella with a note in a book that guides her to J. Jenks Wendell Pierce as only her mind was unreadable. So that she could find the money and in passports Alice had arranged for Jacob and in Renesmee Mackenzie Foy to escape. Bella was distraught to know that in Alice's vision, only Renesmee and Jacob had a future. And Edward and Bella would not be a part of it. Bella starts to make preparations for Renesmee. She packs her a bag with all of their cash and writes multiple notes for her to be opened at different ages, so that she can learn the truth. Bella then counsels Renesmee never to leave Jacob. She sends Sue and Charlie away on an all-expense-paid, non-refundable fishing trip, so they cannot be targeted by the Volturi. The Volturi arrive prepared for battle, led by Aro. The wolf pack joins the Cullens and their witnesses against the Volturi. Aro is eager to obtain the gifted members of the Cullen Coven as part of his guard. Aro is allowed to touch Renesmee and is convinced that she is not an immortal child. Irina is brought forth and takes full responsibility for her mistake, leading to her immediate death. Jane tries to inflict pain on the Cullens to provoke them into an attack. But Bella projects her mental shield to protect all of the Cullens and their witnesses. Aro insists that Renesmee may pose a risk in the future, validating his claim that battle is necessary. Aro says that Renesmee is a hybrid child and hence it is not certain whether she will side with the vampires or the humans in the future. He says that humans are already developing weapons to kill vampires and Renesmee joining them would wipe out the whole species. This is the moment when Alice and Jasper return and join the battlefield. Before any violence, Alice shares with Aro her vision of the battle that is to come, during which both sides sustain heavy casualties, including Aro himself. Aro believes her, giving Alice and Jasper an opportunity to reveal their witness which is a half-mortal half-vampire just like Renesmee. The witness Nahal J. D. Pardo from a native tribe in Brazil says that he was born when a vampire seduced his mother. His mother died in childbirth. He reached maturity in seven years and has a diet of blood and human food. 
He proves that he is mature, supporting the notion that Renis Mee is not a threat. He lives with his Aunt Helen Marissa Quinn whom he converted to a vampire. The Volturi leave without a fight. Back at the Cullen home, Alice glimpses the future, seeing Edward and Bella together with Jacob and a fully matured Renis Mee. Edward reads Alice's mind and feels relieved that Renis Mee has Jacob to protect her. Alone in the meadow, Bella pushes her mental shield away and finally allows Edward a peek into her mind. Showing him every precious moment, she and Edward shared together and the two share a kiss after Bella telling Edward. No one has ever loved anyone as much as I love you, and both Edward and Bella saying they'll love and be together forever. Literally, the song, A Thousand Years, plays in the background. So, what did you think of Breaking Dawn, Part 2? Did it meet your expectations for the series finale? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this review, don't forget to like, subscribe.